Hi everyone, it's Miss Beth from the West Dallas Public Library, and welcome to another episode of our Who HQ Book Club, where this week we are reading Who Was King Tut. So this is episode three, which puts us at chapter five, The Afterlife. Of course, Tut had no way of knowing that he would die young. Nevertheless, he had already started planning his tomb before his death. Why? The ancient Egyptians believed in an afterlife. Life after death was very much like life on Earth. In fact, it was even better. The journey to the land of the dead was a difficult one. Not everyone was allowed to live there. A special book had magic spells that helped a person reach the land of the dead. The book was called The Book of the Dead. Okay, short blurb about The Book of the Dead. After a person died, his or her spirit wanted to reach the land of the dead. A book of powerful spells and songs was thought to help the spirit on the journey. The book is commonly referred to as the Book of the Dead. Over time, the book grew longer until it, until it contained nearly 200 spells. It could be purchased by anyone who could afford it. It was often illustrated in color and a copy of it was placed inside a coffin in a tomb or spells from it were written on tomb walls. The most important chapter described the ritual of the weighing of the heart. Oh, okay. So if the dead person had lied, the monster would eat his heart and he would not enter the afterlife. Yikes, huh? Okay, onward. Every person, even the pharaoh, had to pass a test. In the underworld, his or her heart was put on one side of a scale. Oh, so this is what they mentioned in the, the little blurb. On the other, so on one side of the scale was the person's heart. On the other was a feather. If the person had led a good life, the heart would be lighter than the feather. And that meant the person could enter the land of the dead. In the land of the dead, the person's spirit would continue to enjoy all the same pleasures as before. Eating, drinking, hunting, playing games, and going for boat rides. A tomb was not just a resting place for, for the body. It was like another home, filled with absolutely everything the person would need or want in the afterlife. Of course, poor peasants did not own many things nor could they afford large tombs. Often, poor people were just buried in the sand. But a royal tomb had many rooms, all of which were filled with treasures. The tomb of Tutankhamun was very small for a pharaoh. It had only four rooms. That's because it was meant for somebody else, probably a member of the court. But when Tut died, his own much grander tomb was not ready. There was no choice except to bury him someplace else. The largest tombs of pharaohs are the three pyramids at Giza. The huge statue of the Sphinx is there too, watching over the pyramids. The pyramids were built long before Tut's time, more than 1,000 years before Tut. The biggest pyramid, the, the biggest pyramid belonged to a pharaoh named Cheops. I might be pronouncing that wrong. It took approximately 100,000 workers 20 years to complete his tomb. The body of Cheops was placed deep inside in a secret chamber. I'll show you a picture. I'm not sure if you can see this. In ancient times, 
people knew that treasures lay buried with the body of a pharaoh. Unfortunately, the pyramids were looted. Robbers made off with the objects meant for the pharaoh's afterlife. Pharaohs who lived later decided to build secret tombs to keep robbers away. The tombs were underground hiding places. They had all sorts of traps. Some tombs had stone blocks placed above the entrance. If the door was opened, the stone would fall and kill the robber. Inside, there were false rooms to confuse robbers. And if certain floor tiles were stepped on, they gave way, sending robbers down a shaft to their death. But all the planning and all the traps did not stop thieves. Somehow they managed to find the tombs. They broke into them and made off with the riches. Before Howard Carter found, tombs, found Tut's tomb in 1922, people thought every single tomb of a pharaoh had been opened and robbed. That was why Carter's discovery was such an important event. There had always been legends about the fabulous treasures of the pharaohs. Now there was proof. The legends were true. Okay, I'm gonna do a blurb about the pyramids. The pyramid shape was very important to the ancient Egyptians. They believed that the pharaoh ascended to heaven on the rays of the sun. The shape of the pyramid was a symbol for the sun's rays, which the pharaoh would use to climb to the afterlife. Where the pyramid was put also was very important. It needed to be underneath the most important stars in the sky. The first pyramid was built in 2611 BC for a pharaoh called Djoser. It had six levels that rose up like steps. The first pyramid without steps, called the Bent Pyramid, was built about 30 years later for another pharaoh, but it did not rise very high and the angle by which it was built changed during construction, making it look bent. 50 years later, the largest of the three pyramids at Giza was built. About 2 million stone blocks, each one weighing as much as 15 tons, were used. Altogether, it took more than 80 years to build all three pyramids. For a long time, it was believed that slaves were forced to, be, to build the pyramids. In fact, the laborers were hired workers. There was a large village near the building site where the workers lived with their families. There was even a doctor in case a worker got injured. Let's see if you can see the shapes of the pyramids. So this is the step pyramid. And then you can kind of see the bent pyramid and then the classic pyramid you probably think of today. <clears throat> Chapter six, mummy making. Food and furniture, clothes and jewelry, they would all be used and enjoyed in the afterlife. But the most important thing a person needed after death was his or her own body. The belief was that the person's spirit returned again and again to its body. So the Egyptians learned how to preserve a dead body. They wanted to keep it from decaying. They wanted it to last for as long as possible. What they did was dry out the dead body. They turned it into a mummy. Over the centuries, the ancient Egyptians became better and better at making mummies. Right after he died, Tut's body was ferried by a boat across the Nile. There, priests were waiting. Their job was to make his body into a mummy. From start to finish, it took about 70 days, seven zero. First, the Pharaoh's body had to be cut open. This was so the organs inside could be removed. The Egyptians believed that the heart was the seat of thought and wisdom. Tut's spirit would need, would need his heart in the afterlife, so it stayed in his body. But the priests removed 
his lungs, liver, stomach, and intestines. Each was put in a special jar protected by a different god. Later on, these jars were placed inside Tut's tomb, along with his mummy. The Egyptians didn't think a person's brain did much of anything. So, with a thin hook that went through the nose, they scraped out Tut's brain and threw it away. After this, Tut's hollow body was ready to be dried out. The priests used a salt called natron for about 40 days. Tut's body lay packed in natron. Slowly, the salt dried out all the water from the body. The skin became tough and dry like leather. To keep its shape, the body was stuffed with scented rags. Then it was ready to be wrapped in yards and yards of fine white cloth. The priests said prayers as they wrapped up the Pharaoh's mummy. The wrapping took 15 days. The priests placed white little, oh, sorry, the priests placed little good luck charms in between the layers of cloth. Many of the charms were made of gold and pretty colored stones in different shapes. Some were heart-shaped. Some, called scarabs, looked like beetles. Others looked like tiny eyes. They were meant to keep evil spirits away from Tut. Once his body was wrapped up, the cloth layers were coated with something like glue. When it dried, the wrapping became hard like a shell around the mummy. Now Tut's mummy was ready for his funeral. Okay, it's a little blurb about animal mummies. Besides people, the Egyptians made mummies of many different kinds of animals. Dogs, cats, birds, fish, baboons, even bulls and hippopotamuses. They did this for many reasons. Sometimes a mummy bird or joint of cow, joint of a cow was left in a tomb as food for the dead person. In the afterlife, sometimes people didn't want to leave their pets behind after they died. So they made mummies of their cats, dogs, and even gazelles. The Egyptians believed that, cer that certain gods and goddesses could appear as animals. For instance, the goddess Bastet sometimes appeared as a cat. So cats were turned into mummies to honor her. One temple to Bestet had thousands of cat mummies in it. All right, on the cat mummies, we will stop for today. We'll pick up tomorrow with the Valley of the Kings. So this has been episode three of Who Was King Tut? I will see you tomorrow. Bye.